podcasts are one of the simplest ways to approach content creation, and for many of you, it will be your path into becoming a full-time content creator. So here's some things to help you get started as a new podcaster or an absolute beginner. One of the first things I can tell you about why you need to start a podcast, especially now, is the fact that more than 55% of adults in America for the first time ever are listening to podcasts. And I feel that if you do a podcast, especially if you do a video podcast as a live stream, like I do with the Create Something Awesome Today podcast, you actually have a great opportunity to monetize and access an audience. Podcasts also build very loyal communities and you don't necessarily have to go the video route. If you're on a budget and you're getting started, you have limited time, limited resources, podcasting is much more accessible than video if you're not capable of that. I do believe that if you add the live stream component, it does get accessible and cheaper to do video and audio though. If you want to start an audio only podcast, you could just use your smartphone. You really don't need much more than this to start as a content creator. Having better gear does help and gets better quality results and does make a lot of things faster. But if you're starting from nothing, this is a better device than most of your favorite creators had when they got started. In my own creator journey, I started with this, a very humble Sony HD Webby back in like 2009. This is how it started. This is how it's going. But nobody really needs this. You can start with something better than this in your pocket called a phone. If you have $25 and a smartphone, you can get a very affordable lapel mic. I'm going to link to it in the description down below. It will improve your audio quality and allow you to get started podcasting. Audio-Technica also has a $50 microphone that you could get started with that has gotten great results. I believe it's the ATR 2100. And this is something that I started using in the very beginning of my podcast journey, and it's under $100. If you want to go into video podcasting, you can use very affordable webcams. If you need something under $100, Logitech typically has you covered. And if you want something a little fancier that gets close to DSLR quality, you can get the Elgato face cam. I will link to both of those and the rest of the budget podcast gear in the description down below. And those will be Amazon affiliate links. They do help the channel. I get a small commission at no extra cost to you when you use those Amazon affiliate links. In terms of getting your audio podcast out on all these other platforms, it's one of the key advantages, not only for distribution and getting more attention for your podcast, but also when it comes to the monetization because you get to put links in the show notes. These can be links to your own products. These can be links to your services. These can be links to the Amazon Influencer Program. You know that when I got started with the Amazon Influencer Program, I was able within the first year to get to earning $1,200 a month recommending budget camera gear and budget video editing laptops. So I do think this could be lucrative for a lot of you. Even if you're not in the tech space, you could be using affiliate links from Audible to get a podcast listening aud audience to buy audiobooks by getting a free one that they keep forever. And you would get a $5 to $10 bounty from Audible, depending on whether they go free or whether they decide to pay and keep the subscription service. So even with a small podcasting audience, you have the ability to make up to $100 a month just with the Audible affiliate program from Amazon as an Amazon influencer. So don't think that only big people can make money from this or that you have to do it forever to get anywhere. You can monetize fairly early if you have the right strategy. I will be doing a dedicated video on more than 10 ways you can monetize your podcast. So you wanna make sure you come back and check that out. For those of you in the audience who are self-published authors, or your aspiring authors, you can sell your own books in the show notes of your podcast, and this could be a great way to increase your sales and get more people to buy your book, whether that's the Kindle ebook, a print book like this one, or an audiobook. And with the audiobooks, you actually could earn up to $75 if you've made your own audiobook in Amazon and Audible using the referral link for that. So there's all kinds of ways to monetize your podcasting, even if it's purely on the audio side. When it comes to hosting your podcast and distributing it, you can do this for $0 if you use Anchor FM. This is an app, it's owned by Spotify, but it does allow you to distribute not just to Spotify, but to Apple Music, Amazon Music, and all the other podcasting platforms, including iHeartRadio. 
and Anchor does offer some in-platform monetization if you host there. Now, because I'm a bit of a control freak, I like to go ahead and host on Simplecast and Buzzsprout whenever I'm doing podcasts because I just like having the back end control, all the analytics, and I'm willing to pay for the hosting and the RSS feed there. However, you do not have to do that. You can use Anchor FM for free and you can avoid all of that at least when you're getting started from your podcast. And if you decide to ever upgrade, you can transfer and move your podcast over seamlessly to whatever hosting platform that you want. The thing I like about podcasting is how simple and how accessible it is, but I think that live streaming gives you an opportunity with video podcasting to do more, and that leads us to today's sponsor, StreamYard. StreamYard offers the simplest solution in live streaming and allows you to simulcast your live stream on multiple platforms. I use this for the Create Something Awesome Today podcast, and I put it out on YouTube, LinkedIn Live, Facebook groups, Twitter Live, and even Twitch. This allows me to benefit from being on multiple monetized platforms all at once, earn more revenue, and grow all of my audiences while letting them choose how they want to consume my video live streams. And StreamYard's also great for podcasters because I can download the individual audio files from the live stream, and then I can distribute that, I can even edit it after the fact, and I can put that out to all of my audio platforms. And when I want guest, all I have to do is send them a link and there's nothing to download. It's all in browser and you can try it absolutely free. StreamYard will be linked in the description down below. Get it for free or use one of the wonderful paid plans. Thank you to StreamYard for sponsoring this video. And now back to these tips. When it comes to the live streaming part of video podcasting, one of the most important things is to have a good stable internet connection. I think that this can be something that a lot of you take for granted. When it comes to the video quality, it does matter. I also like using StreamYard because then the CPU intensity is not an issue in terms of the software lagging or anything like that. It's all in browser. And if something happens or goes wrong, the live stream isn't immediately terminated by the software. So that can actually be really helpful so you don't have to lose your live stream or start over. The other great thing about live streaming video is that I was able to monetize my live streaming and podcast YouTube channel in 30 days last December. And the reason I was able to do this is I had to start over because I took a break during the pandemic from my podcast. It was a very long break. However, by coming back strong in the late part of the year, I streamed for almost 30 days really got the audience engaged with the content and I was able to monetize in less than a month because live streaming allows you to get the watch time very quickly to qualify for the YouTube Partner Program, which requires 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time in 12 months. I had to start over based on that 365 day, 12 month cycle because of my long break during the pandemic, but I was able to make up for it with my live streaming. And the replay value of live streams is another benefit for it when it comes to monetizing later on. And it also helps you when it comes to things like the Amazon Influencer Program and affiliate links. One of the other benefits is that I was able to make $1,000 just from donations from my audience because when people enjoy your content, they want to support it. And live streaming your podcast, doing it live to tape, lets them donate to you on their own. And there are three really great live streaming platforms that allow this kind of fan funding that are integrated directly with StreamYard as destinations. And that's YouTube with traditional YouTube monetization and super chats, Twitch where people can actually donate through bits. It's another form of fan funding. And Facebook, believe it or not, because of the Facebook Stars program, which is another form of monetization for live streaming on Facebook. And so by using all these platforms simultaneously, my audience can choose their own adventure and how they want to support me. The way that I approach my podcasting is a little bit more advanced. I do use things like switchers for multicam. I do use the Sony cameras, which can plug in directly to USB when I travel and I stream from my MacBook Pro. And I do prefer to use professional microphones, but none of that should hinder you from getting started. Your content can look basically just as good as anyone else's. And if you're already making YouTube content, even if you're not using your smartphone, which by the way can also be used as a live streaming camera if you 
connect it directly to your laptop. You can use a mount and this becomes your camera, might be a little bit more high quality and not require you to buy anything. You can make quality content when it comes to podcasting as a beginner. It doesn't have to break the bank. All you have to do is focus on high value content. If you're worried that no one will listen to your podcast, just focus on topics that already have conversations around them. Talk about things you know people are already interested in. Here's a hint. It's probably not you because they don't know who you are yet. So talk about something they do care about and keep doing that. And as people get to know you and your personality, you will become their favorite podcaster. But you have to meet people where they are. A lot of content creators fail because they make selfish content. They want everything to revolve around them and they want unlimited attention, usually for no reason. But if you meet people where they are and you show them that you share interest, you share values, you have something in common, then just like the lunchroom, the dreaded lunchroom back in high school when you were trying to find your friend group, it really helps to pay attention to finding where you fit in and then not interrupting conversations that are already happening, but participate in them instead. I know that growing a podcast from scratch can seem really intimidating and that a lot of us make it look easy. But if you want a step-by-step -step on how to get started with some details, I have a video that you have to watch in the description down below. Stay awesome and I will catch you in the next video. Take care.